to talk cars, have a little fun, serious talk, and a ton of passion with Steve, Felicia, and the rest of the gang here on Drive Friendly. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Drive Friendly. I'm your host, Steve Rosansky from Friendly Auto Centers in lovely East Mesa. And with me to my left is my beautiful wife of 28 years, Felicia Rosansky from Platinum Realty. And who's on the show today? We have Kristen Morris and Richard Morris. They're interchangeable. And they a do... guest we have been trying for four years. Four years to get her on to this get on show. The show. We have. She's so busy. She, Jill Herndon and Nicole Klinger, they own Lotus Restoration. They are a fully female owned, really cool restoration uh, place. So if you have a flood in your house or anything like that, they're the people. A body that call, you might want removed. Right. Dead body. They do. You wouldn't believe the stories I've heard. Well, we're gonna, hear the stories. And, and we are today we're talking about restoration, restoring your home, your car, your spirit after a devastating situation. Now, it's beautiful weather here in Arizona. Everything is great. But before you know it, the monsoons are going to come. Now, last year, we didn't really get them. But my gut feeling and the Farmer's Almanac says it's going to be pretty bad this year. Now, well, I have... the rest of the country is getting cicadas, so... I yes, would rather have are. a monsoon than a cicada. By the those way, cicadas are disgusting. By the way, what's the over? Crunch, crunch, crunch every morning. <laughs> what is the over under on Felicia interrupting me today? Anybody have a number? <laughs> you know, it's five already. What do we got? <laughs> Two dozen? Seven. Seven. I, you know, I know Ed White's 25. watching. He... No, I think Kristen was saying 25. 25. Seven. Oh, 25. <laughs> That's about right. <laughs> I yeah, know, girls, he, she interrupts me all the time. I haven't completed I have a sentence. important things to say. See, I haven't completed a sentence in 28 <laughs> years. So uh, I, I just used to it. So anyway, um, if you notice in the background is a picture of us for those who are watching live. Felicia and I lived through two back-to-back -back hurricanes uh, about it was about eight eight or nine years ago. We lived through Hurricane Irene, which is a fast-moving, pretty devastating Category three to four hurricane. Came up the East Coast, blew through Long Island all the way up to Maine. Lots of damage. And then it was followed by Hurricane Sandy, which was like no and other. It was we never. Wow. We have lived through hurricanes. I mean, you live on Long Island, hurricanes, you get them. They bypass. They usually go out to sea, but this ripped us apart. We were very, very lucky because we lived literally on the wrong side of the tracks. Because if you know Long Island, it's got the Long Island Railroad going through it. And you have the South Long Island, and then you've got the railroad tracks, and then you've got North Long Island. We we were north of the tracks in Belmore. Anyone but still on south, the South Shore. But still on the South Shore, but anybody south of us... They, they were flooded out. They yeah, we were, lost their homes. We would drive through months later and you would see couches, beds, bags and bags and bags and bags of just ruined clothing, ruined furniture, ru ruined homes. Got to remember, there's a lot of waterfront homes down there. One of my, my closest friends, I uh, hope he's listening, uh, he lives on a canal in Oceanside, uh, Long Island. The water came in through his back door and right out the front door, out went pictures and art and child things from the kids clothes it it i was there the couple of days after and it just wiped everything out and um luckily i was prepared i had a generator and um we were able to get through but it devastated my business my business was closed for 21 days no electric uh but unfortunately the landlord wanted his rent no matter what my guys wanted to get paid but um it took a couple of years to get long island back to where it was it's still you still see signs in uh different parts uh you know it was almost like how bad hurricane katrina damaged new orleans there are cities in in new orleans that are still abandoned but you know we had to deal with a lot of obviously in my industry we had to deal with a lot of car problems cars that got flooded and people who didn't have proper insurance they had no choice but to try to fix these now if you had insurance most cars got totaled the insurance companies didn't even look at them they just said it went under salt water uh, just, just junk it. We'll, we'll pay it. Were they really junk, Steve? A lot were said they were junk, but they, the titles were washed like Literally. laundering money <laughs> and they were reintroduced into South America overseas, but a lot, and I mean a lot came in filtering through the United States. We recently here in, in Arizona in the last couple of years had a couple of cars from Hurricane Harvey and, uh, you know, unsuspecting um. buyers. I asked, did you check the Carfax? Yes, I saw it. I said, did you check from the beginning when the car was purchased? And they didn't. They only saw the last page. And the car was sold like six times to insurance companies, um, you know, at auctions and stuff like that. So 
be careful. But so what's so bad about having a flood car if it's working? Here's the problem. They listen. I had a flood car. If you remember when we were dating, back yeah, in, I remember that. Back in <laughs> back back in back in '93, we had the big nor'easter, and the the film The Perfect Storm was based mm-hmm. on that actual event. And um, I lived on the water back then, and my car had a Tarantula was completely underwater. So after the tide went out, I had it towed to my shop, and I was actually able to get it running, but I had to take the seats out of it. It took months for the seats to dry. In fact, when we were dating, I used to make Felicia sit on a shower curtain because this way, every time she sat on it, it would squeeze more water out of it. So I had literally a pail. Love is blind, stupid, and it doesn't mind getting wet. That's we all had a, I'm going to say. We had a pail under the seat. So when she sat down, it would collect the water. So I'd literally have to drain the water out. But what, what happens is when you have a car that's flooded, especially salt water, um, you're going to, I can get the car running again. No problem. But the damage to electronics and computers, remember the, back then we didn't have too many computers in cars and they were high up in the dashboard. Now the majority of cars, they're underneath the seats. So if they get under the seats, the computers, the wiring gets all compromised. It starts building up all that corrosion you would and that car would- will never, ever, ever be right. You would think they would do something because there's so many parts in the country that get flooded you would think that they would do something like, I don't know, like a car condom or something well, that like <laughs> that like keeps things from getting wet. You would think so, but th- th- that's why people have S- SUVs. Or STDs. STDs. Use a condom. You won't get an STD. Sorry. What's going on with you today? I'm very excited about this. I'm very happy to have Jill and Nicole on. I can't wait for them to start talking. You guys must have seen flooded things that get flooded. Right, you've you've cleaned up floods. Nobody can hear you shaking your head on the radio. You have to say yes. Let it give. Really stop answer. interrupting them. I have thirty on her interrupting Jill. We're trying to be polite. <laughs> Don't be go. polite. We're from New York. Give it up. Go ahead. Polite doesn't get us anywhere here. So what is what is so you know like I said we get monsoons and I, I want to talk about cars and we'll go over to them, but a, a mistake that people make and I'm going to point to a specific area Greenfield Road. Going south just before the Santan Mall, there's an area that specifically says, do not enter if flooded. This in means the, you. <laughs> in the last six years, I've towed four cars out of there. All of them ended up blowing the engine because they, they thought they could get in. Well, if, if you drive slowly, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter whether you go fast <laughs> or slow. The point is, if an engine intakes just a tablespoon of water, it can't compress it. And it'll bend the connecting rod, put a hole in the engine block. And if you are not properly insured, you have nothing. Now, two of the people were able to call their insurance company up. And because they drove through it, they were 100% covered. But the other two who had insurance, they only had minimum liability and the cars got junk. They couldn't do anything with it. But uh, don't attempt to go through. Going through fast just makes the wake bigger, Richard. Yeah, I was going to say, being in the insurance uh, industry, uh, insurance companies cover stupidity all the time. And driving through a flooded type thing, as long as you have comprehensive coverage on your auto policy, that would be a covered uh, covered claim, unless you're deductible. So I wouldn't recommend it because it's a hassle, but we do cover stupid people all the time. <laughs> Is that like a stupid clause? Stupid, <laughs> stupid motorist. motorist. Yeah. Well, there's a stupid motorist law, but that's a government thing. Right. Insurance, unfortunately, doesn't have a stupid insurance customer <laughs> exclusion. So we deal with there. some of those from time to time as well. Yeah. <laughs> but if you do, if you do end up driving through there and you're lucky enough to get it, you know, to to continue running, but if the carpets get wet. What's, what could happen if you shut your windows at night, all that the water is trying to evaporate, it condenses and comes back down, and that moisture gets into those computer boxes, the modules, the entertainment system, and you will have nothing but issues. So if you do drive through there, the first thing you need to do, get to the car wash, vacuum everything as dry as you possibly can. Roll the windows down, crank the heater and the air conditioning on. Now, how do you do that? You turn the air conditioning on, but you slide the heat switch all the way to hot. See, air conditioning will remove will remove moisture from the car. Heat just gets moisture hot. It'll take longer to dry it. But if you have the air conditioning on and you slide it to heat, 
you're going to get the hot air, plus the air conditioner is going to remove the moisture, and you may have to leave it on four, five, six hours. But um, believe me, we had this with snow and, and water back in New York, and we, we saved hundreds and hundreds of cars that way. So if you decide to go through that puddle and you don't want further damage, put the heat on, I mean, put the air conditioning on, slide the heat to hot, roll the window so the moisture has somewhere to go, and, and you'll be able to, to salvage your vehicle. And that moisture gets in everywhere. Even the stuff you can't see, the wind, electric window motors, the electric window mm -hmm. switches, We've pulled dashboards out two and three years later, and all the wiring is green from corrosion because it wasn't handled correctly. And they sell these things at Home Depot, like you hang in the closet to get rid of moisture, oh, the desiccant bags. When we had it in yeah. the, like a cedar closet. Thing. Yeah. And you can put those in your car. They, they come in bags or little containers, and you break the stuff open and you leave it in the back seat. And believe it or not, the next day you'll see all this moisture uh, that you're collecting. It's actually so. really cool because. Like the, all the moisture collects in this plastic bag and it's like this big plastic bag of water where you didn't even think any water existed. Yeah. And, and you know, dry it out, go to a good strong, you know, car wash, get, you know, the, that the, vacuum The number out. one thing is, especially for our friends who are new to the valley, I know we never see rain here. We had a little rain here Tuesday morning. But here's the deal. If it says don't drive in flooded area, believe it. Believe the sign. If they bothered to put up a big yellow sign, if the government decided it was worth their time to put up a sign saying, do not drive here, they are really talking to you. Richard. Be besides Carfax, you mentioned that earlier. How, how would somebody protect themselves uh, from purchasing a car that might might have been in a flood? Is there signs that, that, the, oh, that yeah. they can look at on the car to see if there was any uh, past flood damage, perhaps? Get a, get a flashlight. Look under the seats. Under the seats are all the springs. If they're all rusted and everything, mm. you know there's been moisture damage. Lift up the carpeting in the trunk. Pull the spare out. A lot of times you'll find uh, silt and sand and stuff Fish. down there. The only way to get there is if water accumulated well, this is and like drained CSI. out. This is so okay? exciting. <laughs> Pull that out. Make sure you buy a car. Make sure every single switch and knob, everything works. Don't take anything for granted. And look in places that you would normally not look. Kristen. Hey, can you talk about the dangers of slow, shallow, moving water? Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go through it. I mean, well, you can go. That's what I mean. People think, oh, if it's shallow and it's only moving a little bit, I should be fine. You could be, but how do you know how shallow it really is? And here's the other thing. Ever hear the term flash flood? Yes. That's what it means. Like you're driving through a nice rainy area, you're getting a bunch of rain, but up on the mountain, it rained an hour earlier and all of a sudden this giant wave of water comes down. It happens. It happens, it happens here all the here time. It happens here a lot. And it, believe it, it's just like the waves that came in off of Hurricane Sandy. It may have hit South Belmore, but it took 10 minutes for the water to come all the way up a mile or two before it receded back. That's what was happening because cars literally were getting carried out of people's driveways uh, out into the road. All right. So now we're going to turn over to Felicia and we're going to ask and interrogate. Interrogate's the wrong word. <laughs> Jill and Nicole have started their own business um, a couple of years ago. Lotus Restoration, you're a 24-hour emergency response service for residential and commercial flood, fire, mold, remediation, and here's my favorite, bio-cleaning, which I definitely want to hear something about that as the show goes <laughs> on. But my first question is, I, I know a lot of restoration companies out there in the Valley. You are the only one I know of that's completely female-owned. How is that working for you? Like, um, what makes you, like, why? What makes you different? Um, do you think it makes a difference to women owning this business? Because this is a messy, dirty business. It is. And um, I think we bring a different limelight to the... Uh, the business in general. Like how? As women, I think that we just approach um, disasters and catastrophes a little bit different. Wait, can you speak up a little? It's not going into your mic real well, so move a little closer. Okay. Can we'll, you hear me we'll now? talk louder. Wow, I've never been told to talk louder. I guarantee that. Um, I think we just bring a different um, aspect to restoration. We come to it from a level of like compassion and what can we do to get the customers comfortable as much as we can in the situation. And then we attack, okay, this is what we need to do to get them restored again. But we can really bring like that 
um, level of compassion and care and concern on how disrupted their lives are when they're going through something like this, not just coming in as fixed mode. So I think um, that gives us a little bit of um, an edge, I think, for our customers. We can provide that service um, more than some of our competitors. I think. Well, well, you're meeting people on what's probably one of the worst days or weeks of their life. Because if sure. you're coming in, I mean, no offense, guys, because I love you, but if you're coming in, things are bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't ever want to have to call you. You're not a cleaning, you're not a house cleaning service. You are a clean off the, fix the property because there's been a flood fire or some terrible thing happening. Yeah. Service. We're dealing with people in trauma all the time. That's what we do. Um, so it does definitely bring in uh, interesting edge to the business because every job and every customer and every situation is new and different. Um but we do have to have a different level of um, courtesy and compassion, I think, because we are dealing with people who are in very stressful situations. Um, so they may react to us or treat us a little bit differently than they would on the day to day because they're in high stress. You know, I like the fact that they've used the word compassion multiple times because I know getting anything serviced at your house, you know, you're in a male dominated business. And generally, a lot of times you may be dealing with a husband. And I know I'm a kind of get to the point kind of guy. And you know, having that compassion when you can relieve people of that stress, knowing that not only are you going to do the job and get the water out or whatever it is that you're doing, but you're going to have an understanding of what we're going through. We may have young children. I know, Nicole, you have a young mm -hmm. one. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, how you can help with that. I, I like hearing the word compassion in business. Yeah. A lot of people don't there's, have that. There's That's not impressive. There's not a lot of it. Is yeah. there in... in you know, we're talking about the monsoons, but is there a, is that your busy season? Is there a slow season for disasters or is it like a year round, anything could happen at any time kind of business? Uh, typically the summer months bring on the, the majority of our, our busy season. We see the monsoons, uh, we see the groundwater temperatures heating up, expanding pipes at, at their joints and, and then they become compromised on toilet supply lines. Um, you know, well, and then about that. in the months to follow, we see, you know, just the tenant or the, the homeowner neglect. Um, homeowner has acknowledged that they have a small loss, water loss, and they, they think it looks dry. It feels dry and they let it go. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, you've got some microbial growth that needs to be managed and taken care of. What does that look like when you say a small, I mean, like, give us an example. So people can say, oh my God, that's me. Like, what would that look like? Ice maker line. Ice maker line is really common. Um, it's one of the things that the housekeeper will come in, they'll pull the refrigerator out. They'll clean behind the refrigerator. They'll slide it back into the wall and not realize that they've pinched the ice maker line. They come home. They've got a slow leak because the ice maker line's been leaking for a couple of hours, and they've got some water damage on the floor, not realizing that the cabinets have also been affected, and uh, the toe kicks of the cabinets have, have, have absorbed the moisture as well. They may mop it up, dry it up, think it looks dry, um, but in the months to follow, they may uncover, you know, a cooking Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner that, you know, they're pulling that rotisserie pot out. They haven't used in several months and they're seeing there's significant water damage underneath the cabinet. And they never thought to look under there because, you know, the water was just visible on the floor. So basically let it just stay dirty behind your refrigerator. Leave it alone. You're better <laughs> off having really dust yes. than you're having mold. <laughs> if we, it isn't uh, broke, don't try to fix it. <laughs> right. We, when we moved into this house, actually, we never saw this in New York. The, the handles, those quarter turn knobs that shut off to your sink and your toilet, they're all made of plastic. And we moved in here, almost every one of them, you know, I just went to turn them on and off because just to check it out. And the minute I touched them, they started dripping and they Very probably common. hadn't been turned off. And I ended up calling a plumber in and I had every single one in the house changed, every supply line, the washing machine hoses and all those supply lines. And the house was all plastic valves and all plastic tubes. And I, I know that I had spoken to you over over time, Jill. Is is that your number one um, cause of floods? Cause of floods? Those it's probably lines? my favorite. It's the easiest to clean up. You know, now, it's clean water. I, I got to ask you a question. So my supply line bursts. I call you up. Who fixes this stuff? Do you have a, a vendors that you can get out in an emergency to help fix that line? Typically, in those types of situations, we would come out and respond. Um, we can shut off and cap off the line where we need to. Um, after the, you know, the mitigation process is taken care of, the home is, you know, properly dried, you're, you know, ready for repairs, 
then we would um, contract a licensed plumber to come in and take those. Repairs. So you can handle everything from start to finish? Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, we're a licensed cool. general contractor. That. I thought you just cleaned it up and you were out the door. So you can arrange a plumber, a contractor, sheetrock guy, all that stuff? Yes. Um, Richard, is this is this an insurance claim, Richard? Uh, yeah, um, almost virtually every time. It would be an uh, insurance claim unless it's a really small uh, type of damage uh, and caught early. Then it might be under somebody's deductible, but you'd still bring in somebody like a Lotus Restoration to to um, look at it, mitigate it. You know, the, the, the main thing is get it dried out and, and stop the damage as, as soon as you can. And then they then they're able to assess, OK, how much damage actually occurred. So, yeah, it would definitely be an insurance claim. Always want to call your insurance agent. Um, Did you call you first? first? Or did you call Jill and Nicole first? Like if we I have take, a flood, what's my first call? We take a different approach to that. Um, typically, we like to come out and evaluate. We advise all of our customers when they call us not to file an insurance claim. You know, when these types of losses occur in your home, um, I mean, this is your dream home. This is You've worked long and hard for this thing. And it's a very emotional process. So just because the, it appears that the sky may be falling, literally that you're, you know, the drywall is falling because there was a leak upstairs to the downstairs doesn't mean that it it is a um, that it's cost effective to actually file an insurance claim. There's a lot of different variables and a lot of different moving parts that are involved um, in order to determine whether or not it's catastrophic and it's time to call your insurance. Company. So what's the difference? What what makes something from this really stinks to this is catastrophic? Like, where's that line? Um, it's, it depends on your home. It depends on your deductible. It depends on how many things that you have in the. I can't hear what you're saying. I can't hear. I can't hear what you're saying. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, it depends on the type of home you have, the type of materials you have in your house, your deductible amount. There's a lot of different variables that go into it. Um, you know, if you're just dealing with a couple of cabinets that need to be rebuilt and flooring or drywall that needs to be replaced, then it may not be claim worthy. Um, that's all stuff that we can handle in house. Um, you know, we can do the flooring and rebuilding cabinets and stuff in-house. Um, but if you're running into a situation where every, you know, square inch, the lower half of your house has been flooded, and especially if it's a category three water loss, so if it's a, a, a sewer backup or something along those lines, all of those coarse materials, cabinets, flooring, et cetera, needs to be thrown away. Um, that can't be restored and it would need to be replaced. So that would be catastrophic. Wow. So, so let me ask you something. What are the really stupid things people do that get you that get get your attention? Like, what what do they do that cause them to eventually call you? Can give me a couple of examples? I love horror stories. Well, we've had one situation where it wasn't even a person doing anything stupid. It was actually the household pet. <laughs> the family had gone. Um, I think they were gone for a couple of days or an overnight trip or something, and their cat turned on the sink faucet. And they had dishes inside the sink, so it was plugging the drain and flooded the entire lower level of their house because the water ran for, you know, 30 hours while they were out of town. So, so the lesson there is wash your dishes before you go on vacation. <laughs> right. Don't ever leave your stoppers down in your sink. Yes. What about <laughs> flooding off the water like in your toilets and things? Do the, would you recommend people do that before they go away? You know, a lot of the times um, when you we get to the mic, it's so hard to hear you. A lot of the times when we went on vacation, we used to I used to do that myself. I would shut off the supply lines and I would shut off the here. main to the home. Um, but now that we own our own company and we kind of know how to mitigate our own damages, we we take that on as a, a brave measure. We just leave <laughs> yeah, the house and just leave the water on. Pay yourself. That's so, fine. so for those of you who don't own Lotus Restoration, would you recommend that we shut our toilets and sinks? Like what if should we shut? We're going on vacation because the whole world wants to go on vacation now. We all want to get the heck out of our houses. So before we leave and without even shutting the door behind us, what should we do? So if we decide to ever come back, we can come back to a house that is in relatively good shape. It's always our recommendation to turn off the water to the house if you're going to be gone for any period of time. And that can be done with a simple water key just at the street line. You don't have to run through your house and turn off every single angle stop um, because those types of things aren't really meant to take on that type of wear and tear, especially yeah. if you're a frequent traveler. So at Home Depot, buy $11 uh, metal wa water key and shut it off at the, the street line. I see that you have some clients who've done some other really not so um, recommended activities. Tell me about the guy who caused an explosion on his patio. What was that all about? 
<laughs> there was an explosion on his stove. <laughs> on, okay, what happened? <laughs> Apparently, he liked to repurpose um, golf clubs, and he would purchase them at Goodwill, but didn't want the uh, neighbors from the country club to know that he was repurposing them. So he was uh, spray painting the uh, shaft of the golf club in order to make it look fancy on the green. And apparently one day the spray can, or the spray paint can, wasn't emitting the proper amount of paint. So he thought maybe if he just warmed it up on the stove with a little water, that um, it would loosen it up and make it, you know, work, you know, a little better. Um, little did we realize he had fell asleep in the recliner and it had basically combusted on the stove. When we arrived on the scene, all of the window seals were basically blown out. And the patio door was about 10 feet, the, the Arcadia door was about 10 feet away uh, from his home. Uh, the, spray paint, the spray paint can was actually um, shot off like a rocket and stuck in the drywall in the ceiling. Oh, my God. Would have been cheaper to buy clubs. <laughs> I told him, I said, sir, the next time you need a can of spray paint, please don't warm it up on the stove. We'll be more than happy to drive around the corner at Home Depot and buy you one for $3.57. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my God. That's what crazy. about, what about, um, I hate to say that it was a woman driver because that's just going to get me in all kinds of trouble, but tell me about one of your female drivers. What did she do? Well, you know, as women, we are multitasking almost all of the time. And sometimes we don't always get it right. Um, so this poor young lady was trying to get out the door in the morning. It's a little rushed and got in her car, went to go pull out of her garage and accidentally hit the gas instead of the brake and ended up going through the back wall of her garage which just so happened to have the sprinkler lines in it the power lines and the gas lines to the house so that you know if it was any other wall she would have hit it could have been just minimal damage but because of all of that there were permits that had to be pulled and inspections that had to be done and they couldn't have gas or water or power to their house for I don't know three or four weeks until all the repairs were done so Wow. Turned into a pretty catastrophic job. I, I've seen people who have tennis balls in their garage to keep them from going forward, but you right. probably should maybe have a sticky note saying yeah. in reverse. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yes. So when are you coming out with a book? Yeah. You know, that would be a great idea. You would, you would mention that. Years ago, when Nicole and I both got into the business, um, we actually had a local producer contact us. They wanted to do a show about women in restoration. And being new in the business, um, I guess being relatively new in the business as business owners, uh, we were a little intimidated by it. But it's funny, not a day goes by that we don't kick it around and talk about, let's add that to our book, yeah. you know? So it may be in the works. It may be down the road. Who knows? What was the, what would you say was one of the, well, I just got to get to the thing. If we only have a minute and a half left, tell me one example. What do they mean by bio damage? Oh, I know what that is. I know you know. I want to hear them tell me. When you bury a body underneath a... Oh, never mind. So Biodamage could be anything from um, if there's an unattended death or sometimes you have elderly people that slip and fall and they, you know... You got to talk closer to the mic. I can't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, or we have elderly people that will sometimes slip and fall and bleed out or have an accident or something. Um, we have cleaned up after... Um, bounty hunters that went in looking for people and filled hotel rooms with pepper, uh, spray. pepper spray. That would be considered a biohazard cleaning. So, um, yeah, I mean, any kind of trauma cleaning. We've done vehicles also where there's been an accident and there's bodily fluids in, in the vehicle. Hoarding. Hoarding. Lots of hoarding. Those yeah. are always interesting. Yeah. yeah. I've done hoarding as a realtor and it's interesting would be a word. I don't know if I would use the word. Well, I guess interesting would be the safe word to use. Because and it, and it, it kind of falls in line with the same thing as about flood cars. There are flood houses out there, people. There are flood houses. There are houses out there with issues of mold, water, lack of permits, things that haven't been done right, electric things that have been wires that have not been properly installed by an electrician. And they are becoming lawsuits now. So I talk all the time about what a crazy real estate market we're in. Let me explain what's happening on the other side. People are buying homes, as we know, very quickly. They only visit it once. They put it in an offer. They offer 20, 30, 40. Now it's 50, $60,000 over asking price. They're beating out everybody. They're winning their game, but they're making a terrible, terrible mistake. Some of them, some of them are saying, we will take the house as is, but I still want an inspection. 
which is correct. Mm -hmm. Other people are saying, I will waive the inspection. Why don't you just go to Vegas and put it all on black? Because that's what you're doing. You are taking a terrific big gamble with your but life savings in your biggest asset. Because there are a number of lawsuits that are now pending in Arizona because they feel that the owner misrepresented the house they were selling because they did not disclose that there was mold, there were water leaks, there were lack of permits, there were electrical problems. Well, guess what? Some of these owners might not have known that. Mm -hmm. that. I can't tell you, I've been doing real estate, I've been selling homes in Arizona for over eight years, and I can tell you, many, many owners do not realize the own damage that's in their home because it's small and it hasn't had time to grow into something mm -hmm. that we would call Lotus Restoration right. for. Mm -hmm. So for, for, what, for if you're lucky enough to win that bid on that house, Take that inspection. Even if you only have one day or two days, there are great inspectors out here. Inspect that house. Know what you're buying. Otherwise, you are going to end up with a soggy, wet house that could electrocute you. <laughs> you won't even know it. <laughs> That's true. We have, so, we've seen some, even in our old house, remember when we cleaned out when we were moving, there was some black stuff on the back under the sink. We didn't even know. And everything was new. And, you know, you know, we just bleached it and it went away. But it's if you don't see it, you don't know about it, you know, especially under the paper. When you put the paper under the sink, it grows under there. You don't even realize it because you're never looking. So, yeah. So and also here's here's one thing. I don't know if I mentioned it last week, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit now. And I'm going to talk about it more next week because I'm going to tell you what you can do to win that bid on that house. Don't send a love letter. I know your agent is telling you to send a love letter. I know every time you read something or you go on YouTube or you read something on Zillow or Realtor.com, send a love letter. Have a picture of you, your wife, your kid, your dog, grandma, everything. Here's the deal. Yes, Jill? Love letters. Yes, they're called love letters. I want this house so badly because me and my husband just moved here and we, no. we have two little kids that we want to grow up in this house and I love the neighborhood and we see our children playing in the local park. That's fantastic. That's also a fair housing violation. Wow. Because if you... If, if four people send a love letter and one person wins, the other three people can say, you didn't pick me because I had a family that looked different, because I looked different, because I didn't have a family. Whatever it is that differentiates the person that didn't win that love letter from the person that did can become, a, if that person is a protected class, race, uh, family status, anything like that, you have a lawsuit on your hands. Both agents can be sued. The brokers are going to get sued. The seller is going to get sued. And we have several cases in Arizona pending on that very issue right now. So I can give you uh, next week. I'm going to talk about a lot of things you can do to win that bid. But a love letter is a slippery slope. And especially if you're a, if your agent tells you to do it, they are not giving you good advice. They're telling you to violate fair housing laws in the United States. And that can have a fine of up to sixteen thousand dollars. So giving so, be careful what you do out there. So what if you just give the realtor 10 grand in cash under the table? Is that okay? Uh, no, that's not okay. I'm that's definitely checking. not okay. I'm just checking. That's definitely no, not okay. No, but what, here's my my question. So the house was, the the owner was selling it for $350,000. I decided to pay an extra 100000 because I want the house. Now I'm in the house a year and I say, you know what? I could use some money. I want to mortgage the house. Is the house worth the four fifty I paid, or am I only getting mortgage off of the three fifty? We'll talk about that next week. That's a good question. We're going to talk I mean, about that know. next week because we're going to be seeing a lot of that in the next three to four years. Is yeah. my prediction? Because then you go to sell that house because everybody moves two hundred. Yeah, but here. by the time that happens, I'm going to be on my cruise around the world. Kristen, where am I going? You're going on a hundred and eleven day cruise around the world, so I'm you're there. going to visit twenty five to twenty nine countries. You're hitting six of the continents. We're not going to Antarctica. So, we did that last week. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was a few weeks ago. And yeah, you, but the nice thing about world cruises is you can do it all or do increments of it. So it, it's kind of nice. You can start from uh, LA and take the 111 uh, day cruise. You can start from Fort Lauderdale and only go 88 days. So is this going like, this isn't going really around the world, is it? Yes, it Like is. around, around the world? Around the world, yes. You're going to start on one side, either Fort Lauderdale or L.A., and you're going to go. You're going to go to Australia. You're going to go to um, 
China, you're going to Singapore, you're going to um, the Greek Isles, you're going up to Spain and, you know, Great Britain. Then you're coming down and you're going to hit South Africa. You're, you're either going to go through Cape Horn or you're going to go through the um, uh, Panama Canal so you can get back. So, yeah, you're going to hit most of the world, let's say. Not all of it, but most of it. So if you go to China, China is such a, a huge country. How many cities do you see in China? I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I've been to China, but I've I've only been to one city, and I've only been to Beijing, and I really want to see. I heard South China is just amazing. Beijing was fantastic. It really, really yeah. was. Tian, Tianjin is typically a port on yep. you know for China. Tianjin is is the closest port to Beijing. to Beijing. What's funny is the best food that we had was served on an upside down garbage pail. We got five dumplings for one yuan, which is like twenty eight cents. It was fantastic. Well, what was really interesting was we were there, what was it? Uh, God, I can't remember how many years ago it was already. Six, five years five ago. Five or six years ago. Everybody was wearing masks. So they oh, did. You that, was, even... that was a pollution because of the pollution. That's pollution for significant them. Significant out you there. Could, you could stare at the sun in broad daylight and you couldn't even see it. That's how. Remember we landed and the smog was so thick when we got in the terminal, in the airport, there was a cloud literally inside. Beijing has this huge airport. Oh, wow. And you didn't see the runway until we were almost on the ground. I mean, it's incredible. But um, yeah. after a few days, you know, it cleared out. It was a beautiful so, city. So after China, where do I go? Uh, it depends on how long you're going to be on the on the cruise I'm ship. going for like two years. You're going for two years. <laughs> <laughs> hiding in the you cabin. There I'll are back when the housing market is decent again. Yeah, there are people that instead of putting themselves in, you know, uh, you know, care facilities, you know, they actually get a room on a cruise yeah. ship and they just cruise around and they're happy and they're that's what they want to do. So, I all right, so that. wait, wait a minute, because this is like really interesting to me. Okay, so instead of going like we 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 have several friends who uh, work at Akoya Mesa, which is wonderful assisted living, and they always say it's like cruise living on land. But if I can actually get on a cruise and go on a cruise, but how does that work with like medicine and doctors and, you know, old people are like, you know, we need pills. Like, how does that work? <laughs> they they do have medical uh, centers on the cruise ships. And now since the pandemic came about, they've actually expanded their medical centers. So you can get uh, you get a doctor uh, to prescribe you things. You can get them they on the ship. If not, when you hit a certain port, they may be able to get them that way. So, but there are, there are availability to see doctors to get the medicine. Now, are these cruises running now or are we just still waiting to like They're watch? probably going to start up in 2022 <laughs> since we haven't actually gotten on the water here yet from the United States, but we're hoping that that will be coming soon. I got a quick question. I, yes. I know... A cruise like this has to cost a mortgage. <laughs> what um, is, kind of. I, mean, right, I want to guess. For the, I want to guess okay, how much guess. this costs. I'm going to write a number down. What do you mean, write a number down? I'm going to write Are it down. Are you going to do it per person? Yes. Okay. All right. How much? I, I, I wrote down 65000 per person. Am I close? No. Am I high About 40000 per person. Well, that's not that's bad. Nothing. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Forty thousand per person. You know, we yeah. never have to. Pay you those could, people. if you got into the really suite, finish college. It's you not probably really could get up into the sixty thousand per person. If I want, and that's if for an in inside cabin with no window. Right? No, that's a balcony. Oh, nice. So are these are these are these large ships? Are these like these huge? I mean, how many people are on these on these cruises? Um, Island, well, Princess Cruise has one, and Island Princess has about twenty nine hundred passengers if i remember correctly it's a lot of people going around the Still world a lot of people well all right so now i've got my fantasy cruise in 2022 i'm stepping off i'm going to la i'm getting on a ship and i'm not coming back till i get to where pensacola florida where you said florida if fort right? lauderdale fort lauderdale okay but since i can't do that now what can i do I want to see well, how you pack for a 111-day cruise. We have to <laughs> rent do. an SUV for a weekend in San Diego. 
You know what? If I'm going on a 111 day cruise, I'm packing a credit card, need, like, nothing else. Remember, I'm going to just shop as I go. What was that movie with Tom Hanks and, and Meg Ryan where they go to Oh, Joe versus the Volcano. And the volcano. he packs like, like, like trunks and stuff. But this those is... trunks saved his life. Well, there are uh, <laughs> okay. some cruise lines will have actual laundromats on the cruise ship so you can do your own so. laundry or you get it done by the crew. Yeah. The, the uh, yeah. If I'm going on a cruise, I'm not doing my own laundry. Why don't I just like clean up the tables afterwards and vacuum the hallway? Hey, maybe we'll get a discount. Maybe we'll get a discount if you did that. Stop so, being lazy. So, but, but what can I do? What can I do now? Is there anything I can do now? Is there yeah, you can available? actually. There are places around here in Arizona that you can go to and enjoy yourself, enjoy your stay. Uh, Sedona is one of them. It's gorgeous to see the Red Rocks. You can go. They have wineries up there. You can have wine tours up there. And it's it's just peaceful. And actually, it will restore your spirit. You'll just be able to to um, relax. Um, their Dona stuff is up in, awesome. Uh, I'm yeah. trying to get my friend Steve Walzak, who's actually listening to the show right now, who's kind of retired, who should come out to Arizona and check out Sedona. I just got to get him to leave Long Island. I know you're listening, Steve, because you're texting me at the same time. <laughs> Thanks for listening. But well, you also yeah. have the little mining communities, uh, Bisbee. I love Bisbee. Oh, yes. Bisbee's it's, awesome. Bisbee's too become bad. very popular in the left. How close is Bisbee to the Mexican border? I think it's like 40 miles. Yep. To the border, and yes. that used it's, to be a it's copper close, mining town, but right? far enough yeah. away. Is that, was that a copper mining town? Yes, it was. Remember the steps, the steps in Bisbee to go up when you when and you're down. And they turned it into this really funky. Cool, there's like a race. It's a cool it, place. It's really pretty, and it's got all the houses are on the side of the hill in different colors and Coffee things shops. like that. Coffee shops. It's, it's really cold. Do you guys ever take vacation? Yeah, we do. We actually Where do, you do like to go. Um, I like to spend a lot of time in California. Um, hopefully, by traveling to Hawaii in the fall, depending on, on the pandemic and well all the. Um, the all the requirements to get there. Yeah. We just actually canceled an early uh, June uh, California trip um, because some of the theme parks aren't aren't allowing families with more than three people inside the park or outside out out of state resident residents. So that was a little bit of an issue. So we hope to get that rescheduled. And Nicole's got we, some things planned too. Yeah, we do a lot of camping. So yep. you know, we my three girls, and my dog. We spent a lot of time in our camper, so we're actually going to drag that back to Kansas this summer to. We went camping. We stayed it up. Hmm? No, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I haven't been able to see my parents in over a year because of the pandemic, or a year and a half, I guess now. So I'm very excited to get back to see them. And yeah, I, the I haven't seen my relatives in Colorado in um, about a year and a half. It's yeah, wow. I haven't seen my sister lives in California, and I haven't seen her in almost two years. Like Me too. Mm. we had a year and a half. We haven't mm. been to New York in two years. It's like we're bursting. We're know, bursting. For so, sure. what yeah, do you guys think is going to happen to the airline tickets? You think the prices are going to start skyrocketing? They already are. We're yeah. They already are. So, what should we do? Should we buy now for next year? Do you think they're going to go down? Or you know, it, airlines are tricky. Rich has been dealing with a lot of airline flights right now. Do you have any information on that? Well, you know, we still can't purchase air further out than 330 days, so about 11 months. So anything, you know, we're we're just basically able to buy through through February, early uh, early March time period right now. Uh, I think uh, as we go along, there'll be more planes back in the air, more routes coming in, and then we'll see uh, maybe a leveling off of pricing but right now we have a supply and demand issue we got a lot of demand right now and the supply is still depressed mm -hmm. as far as routes and so forth so that's where you're seeing the pricing challenges come in so the airlines probably like that i think we'll see a slow increase of uh, planes coming back so that the airlines can kind of milk uh, as much revenue out of uh, the people who want to travel as much as they, you know, as much as they can, they want to get that before we see a, a leveling off. So I think prices, um, prices are going to be high for, for the short term here. Yet another reason to use a travel agent, because if I had to figure it out, I put a, I, it would not be good. Didn't they, one of our... They'd be scraping me off the wall. Nicole and Jill would be scraping me off the wall. I that's a biohazard. I'd be a biohazard. Did, didn't one of our listeners from Jersey book a vacation with you? 
We are working on it. That's yes. awesome. awesome. See? That's yes. awesome. That's and also, Gabby is booking a vacation with you. She's not here Oh, Gabby today, booked it. But she'll be back next week, and I know she's booking a cruise with you. Yep, she's so you already got, booked it. We've all got it. cruise fever right now. I yeah. Got some kind of fever. I it's the Mediterranean <laughs> next year. Yeah. So, Jill, Jill um, and Nicole, we want to really thank you. We hope you're going to come on again. It won't take another four years. We hope before the book comes out, we can help you preview it. Maybe is buy a any, microphone. we got one minute left. Do you have any advice for our customers? Light. Our, our listeners about how to keep you out of their house. Thank you so much for not giving up on getting us on the show and for just keeping at it. And yes, next time we'll be prepared with a ring light and a microphone and we'll be good to go. No, Any awesome. last minute advice for our listeners about how to keep you out of their house? Maintain it. Just proper maintenance. Mm -hmm. And don't do it yourself. Sometimes it's best to call a licensed contractor. Um, don't do it yourself. No do it yourselfers out there. They are some of the most hysterical stories that we could probably tell um and uh stick with the licensed contractor when it's when it's due and stop trying to impress your friends on the golf course yeah <laughs> right <laughs> yes. all right okay. we want to thank everybody for listening richard and kristen always you know they're our regular hosts they'll be here again next week i don't know who's coming on the show next week we i only find out later and i want to thank jill he's and in every production meeting he just doesn't pay <clears throat> pretty much i have adhd adult version and i'm proud of it it gets me through the day so we want to thank jill and uh nicole from lotus contracting what's your number jill loudly quick you can you can give us a call at 480-500-5481 we're 24 7 and always available to assist awesome i want to thank everybody for listening especially our listeners across the united states and thank everybody for listening. And stick around here at 1580 The Fanatic. Lots of great sports coming up. Only 162 days till football season opens up from today. Very excited. The Jets still don't have a quarterback. So until next week, drive friendly Arizona. See you next week. Thank you for listening to Drive Friendly with Steve and Felicia. Visit drivefriendlyaz.com for live shows, past shows, and more about our host and guests.